All right, guys, I just got this package from Mark in Nevada. That's a city, not a state. Um, I'm not really sure how to go about this. There's, there, there is some writing on the other side, but it's actually his address, so I really don't want to show that. But uh, this is all sealed up. As you can see, we got the keys all sealed up. We got a couple of quick set keyways. I'll show you those in a minute. And then we got a couple of these guys. It's a zoo lock. I don't know what keyway it is exactly. I don't know if Mark intends for me to open this envelope before or after, but if I bust it open before, it means I'll be breaking the keys off there. I really don't want to don't want to do that. So let's save that sealed envelope. So if something goes really awry and I need some help, maybe then I'll bust it open and we'll take a look. Um, these are both quick sets, and we've got these numbered number three, number four. Quick set keyways, but they're not part of the same uh, lock set. There's a five pinner on number four and a six pinner uh, on number three. And then over here, these probably were part of the same lock and they've been snapped. These are both five pinners. They both got some master lock, high security tape holding all those training plugs in there. So it looks like uh, Mark turned these into training locks. All right, let me go ahead and pick these. I'm gonna pick the six pinner first. Might as well go with the biggest challenge, I guess. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get this guy picked and see what kind of alien technology Mark in Nevada has come up with. Let me get it clamped up, be right back. All right, guys, it is a quick set. So a nice wide open keyway. I'm gonna use a 50,000 top of the keyway. Got a little flop in there. Let's go ahead and mark it. So we get a false set. And that ought to work, whoops. All right, I feel like dancing today. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dance on these pins. I am counting six, but I am feeling some crunching just from feeling around. All right, I am going to dance on these pins. The way I'm going to do that is hold on to my tensioner, first of all. Very light tension. I'm going to take a medium hook. This is a nice thick one, 23,000, because it is a key, quick set keyway. Very light tension, and then I'm going to, we used to have another word for this, but I kept getting videos blocked. Starts with a B, but just going to move down the keyway. And this works with... Sometimes with serrated, there's a counter rotation. That was pin one, counter rotation on six. And you gotta be real light on the tensioner. I'm on pin, there's like two is right at the bottom. And I think I do have a, felt like a fault set, but not much. All right, now I'm gonna take my time. Because obviously this dancing is not working. Find some counter rotation here somewhere. And I'm not feeling it. Might have overset some overzealous dancing. I'm going to stomp on those pins just a little bit too deep. Just forced number three a little bit higher. I got a little click out of him. Got a big click out of him. Okay, that was pin four. Went a little deeper fault set. I'm on six now. I'm getting counter rotation. Back to dancing. And there we go. Dancing works. May not look real good when I do it, but uh, it does work. All right, let us see what we got in here. I'm going to try to... I do have a key. Let me move this right out of the way. What I'm going to try to do is see if I can't just remove that one side there. I don't know if those are taped in there. Take my scalpel and just cut that tape right there. Maybe that will be, nope, all that holds it together. Yeah, there we go. That was the right one, right? No. Crap. There we go. All right. Kind of nasty looking. Let's see if it works. Put that back in there. Did not mean to. <laughs> I should have. Well, there's no way for me to have flipped them over, I guess. But that was a number four key stuck in the number three side. And number three was in the number four side. Oh, well. Works. Whoa. 
It works really good going clockwise. Does not like going counterclockwise. Something, oops, something right there. Just really gets hung up. But it turns clockwise perfectly, and that's how I was picking it, so let's call it good. I do have to turn it counterclockwise. I'm going to gut it and keep the pins up. All right. Let's move all of this stuff out of here. Get us a tray. And a special tool. Let's see if that works. Oh man, wouldn't you know it? Not standard. It is based on a quick set, so what do I expect? Come out, come out. I think maybe it might not be a standard core either. All right, get in there. Come on, there you go. Something getting hung up in there. And here we go, all six. Again, we have the filed top. A lot of you guys say, oops, I just had a wafer fall out. I don't know where he fell from. Very tiny little guy. I don't know where he fell from. And everything looks to be right at the shear line. If anywhere, he came out number six. But it is like hair thin. I guess that was him. All right, let's just take him out before the wind blows him out of there again. Number six goes right there. All right, I've heard a lot of you guys say that when you file this down, it tends to leave a, leave a larger gap, so that if you have spools, it gives you a much deeper fault set. I don't know if that's really true. I've also heard people say that when they don't have the right size pin, sometimes it's easier just to shove pins in there and then file everything flat, and that way, you know, it's a perfect uh, shear. Again, I don't know how true that is. Uh, if you guys want to weigh in, uh, there's the comments. Go down there. Check it out. I'm having trouble getting this key out. There we go. And I'm seeing an awful lot of serrations. All right, serrated. Serrated. Oh, that was interesting. There were two pins inside of there. Standard. Standard. Serrated. And every single one of those guys is serrated. And let's see what we got here. Oh, commercial serrated, and he's got a tiny, I don't know that's showing up there. It has a tiny little wafer on top of him, too. Oh, he fell in the right spot. What do you know? And... Got to be a spring in there somewhere, right? There he is. It is a doubled up steel spring. All right, number two. It is a two-part pin. Well, again, we got a wafer here. And we had it. Uh, I know what he's for. I know what he's for. I know what you're trying to do to me. All right. You guys ought to be able to guess that, too. Let's save it for those of you. It'd be like a big surprise at the end. It'd be like Christmas. Again, I got a doubled up spring. And that chamber was also threaded. All right, number three. Again, I have a wafer and a T-pin. And again, I can tell you, I know, I've seen this technology before. It is not friendly. And I have another pair of, look at that, little baby one with a long one. All right, number four. What do I do with those tweezers? 
Again, I see some unfriendly technology here. I think I was very lucky on this lock. And I don't know how. Even if I knew the bidding, I couldn't. <laughs> you can't be that lucky. <laughs> and I got another bunch of springs down in there. Got a whole wad of them. Come out. They're hung up. Probably hung up in the plug. In the threads. Um, I am going to pull it out of there. Because I can't slide the plug through and I can't get it to pin behind it. So I'm going to have to ruin some springs here. They are caught up. I should, uh, when this was threaded in the top, it captured the spring. Okay, there was one of them. And then the other one was ruined. So that was a double spring as well. All right, let's flip it over and get number six out. On the last couple locks, it's not normal to have to use needle nose pliers to take locks apart. The last few, though, have been that way. All right, here's number six, and he's not even at the shear line. If I can get my flashlight to work, and of course it uh, doesn't when you need it. He's not even at the shear line, but there's definitely, definitely a pin there. And there he is, a little spool. And there was a wafer in there. And the last one, number five. It is a commercial serrated. Come out, come out, and a doubled up spring again. Just want to make sure there's still something in there. There he is. He's caught up. Also caught up in the... Uh, I don't want to ruin that one. We've gotten everything out of there. Let me pull this security tape off of here. And just take that out. Otherwise we're going to tear up that spring. Now we ought to come out. Come out, come out. And again, I got a double serving of springs on this lock on every single chamber. All right, guys. Um, every one of these is also threaded. It, it really does look like Mark, when he threaded the top of these, he just carried on all, all the way through and threaded every single one of the chambers. So every single, every single chamber in the core and also in the body of the lock are all, all threaded, all serrated. Um, the reason I jumped on this technology. All right. You guys notice, again, let me get the shadows off of that tray so maybe we can see it just a little better. Turn that blind up. All right. Take a look at chamber. Well, first of all, we got some homemade pins. Number one and two are homemade pins. Number five is also homemade. All those are serrated. Uh, upstairs were basically all commercial except these three guys. These three guys all had a little wafer. Now that one was doubled up. So that would have, anytime you have multiple shear lines like you do on number six, number four, number three, and number two, and also number one, it doubles my chances of being able to get in. So probably would have had a lot better raking, uh, luck raking on this one. I just didn't give it very much of a try. But these wafers here have another purpose, and that's because these little guys are all T-pins. These T-pins are all designed to act as a trap. Where'd that core go? So, T-pins hanging down there. If I pick it to the correct level, then this little wafer blocks the sharp part. Come here, you blocks the sharp part of that pin from coming down. So I pick it up to the shear line right where the palm of my hand is, it blocks that little tit from popping down. Nothing, it can't go into a hole if a hole presents itself. Well, there's a lot of holes on this core. Where'd they go? There they are. So if I pick it counterclockwise on any of these three 
and I pick it to the wrong shear line, in other words, I leave the wafer in the core, so I pick it to the first shear line, when this dude rotates around, they drop down inside of there, and they get trapped. There's three of those, so you have to pick all three of them to the correct height. If I had picked this counterclockwise, like I tend to do, uh, I could have had some big problems here. Luckily, I picked it clockwise, so there were no holes for this to flop into until I rotated it completely around. Then it would have popped in there. Number two, three, and four all would have been trap pins. So I may very well have picked it to the wrong shear line. I might have exposed one of these tips, but because I picked it in the clockwise direction, it didn't happen. Luck plays a big part of this little game. All right, fellas. Anyway, there you go. Lucky day for me. If you like dancing, thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. Mark, thank you, sir, for the lock. I'm sorry I didn't fall into the trap like you wanted me to. Appreciate it, guys. All right, guys. Happy Chinese New Year. It seems like everything I've ordered is either delayed because of Chinese New Year or it's on back order somewhere. But I do like to give away something every Saturday or every weekend. So I got to dig in the pile and I've come up with this, a brand new Sparrows Ranger kit. Uh, you, you guys have seen my review of this before. If not, I'll put it in the link below. See what you're winning. Anyway, a little Velcro. The whole pouch comes out and inside of there, as I said, it's brand new. I didn't even unpackage anything. Still in the original plastic, you got all of the shims for shimming padlocks. And then a great little kit. Very convenient in this removal. You can leave that part on your duty belt or on your belt and carry that inside of there. Very neat system they come up with here. Anyway, if you'd like to win this, all you got to do, go down to, move it all the way, that website. In the middle of the page, big purple button, click it and register with a little bit of luck. You'll be the proud owner of a new Ranger kit next weekend. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. Thanks for your patience. Come on, Chinese New Year. Hurry up. Send my stuff.